delightful to be back here again. Over the course of the last 30 or 35 years or so, I've spoken in this chamber maybe about 20 times. It's the first time I've ever done it when it's not been a debate. And it's the first time I've ever done it sober. Um, <laughs> Anybody wants to see me talking when I'm drunk, I am speaking in the debate tomorrow night, so please do, uh, <laughs> do come back and see if, uh, see if you can tell the difference. Um, it, it's also genuinely a privilege to be here because uh, of the tremendous list of, of amazing people who have spoken here in the past. I'm looking at the uh, bust of William Gladstone there, of whom I'll say something in a moment. Last night we had John Bolton speaking here. Tonight. I came here through a demonstration against Julian Assange. Last night you had, speaking here, a war criminal who had a major part in the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people in Iraq and there wasn't a single demonstrator outside against him. Some of you have got your values seriously messed up. because I came across the torture of people to get so-called intelligence, and I came across extraordinary rendition. When I resigned, or was sacked, I don't care what you say, um, <laughs> I was proud that I had done the right thing. I had lost my career, I'd lost everything I'd worked for my whole life, but I could sleep at night. I knew that the intelligence got from torture was untrue, because you don't get the truth from torture. Forget these stupid films about Bin Laden, forget 24, forget Hollywood. The vast majority of people tortured for intelligence are completely innocent. <coughs> and the people doing the torture are the thugs of Mubarak, or the thugs of Karimov, or the thugs of whichever dictator <coughs> is employing them. And they are not disinterested seekers after truth. They are people wanting to create the narrative their master wants to hear. And unfortunately, we had a period where in pursuit of war, the Western intelligence agencies were knowingly accepting intelligence from torture in order to propound false narratives that pursued war. That is what we were up against. Why we need WikiLeaks and organizations like WikiLeaks, why we need whistleblowers is you can no longer automatically trust governments. I knew people personally, I'd worked with people, I knew people very, very well who were involved in the preparation of the dossier, the dirty dossier on Iraqi weapons of mass destruction. I actually happened to have had as a previous job being in charge of the FCO section monitoring Iraqi attempts at weapons procurement. I can tell you for certain that the majority of people involved in the preparation of that dossier knew it was not true <coughs> and produced it under political pressure. And I can tell you, I know of people who were in tears. I know of people who were near suicidal. I know of the pressures they put on people. I know what they do to people. When I came out and blew the whistle on extraordinary rendition and torture, I was accused of sexual allegations. I was accused of blackmailing visa applicants into sex which is rape in another word. I was not guilty. I was not guilty. It took me years to clear my name, and it was the most appalling thing that can happen to you. And anybody who believes governments do not do that kind of thing to whistleblowers is naive. Let me tell you something more. The other reason we need organizations like WikiLeaks is that the space of debate has narrowed because the mainstream media no longer allows a wide area of debate. I said I would come back to Gladstone, whose bust is there. While he was leader of the opposition in the 1880 general election, uh, the third Afghan war was in progress, and Gladstone, in his Midlothian campaign, made a speech in which he said, our troops have, have driven 
the wives and children of the Afghans into the snows of winter. If they resist, would you not do the same? It is no longer politically conceivable that any leader of the opposition in the United Kingdom would say of people fighting against British troops, if they resist, would you not do the same? Can you imagine if any mainstream British politician said that those fighting British troops in Afghanistan might have some right on their side as we had invaded their country? Can you imagine the way they would be drowned out by our ultra-nationalist and militarist media which we have nowadays? There is no longer space in our society for the kind of de debate that Gladstone used to enjoy. And that servile nationalist uh, role played by the media is a reason why we need to fight back using alternative media. One thing people always recall about WikiLeaks is the helicopter footage of the Reuters journalists being killed uh, by an American uh, military unit. One aspect people forget is that the families of those journalists had been told for years by the Pentagon that the Pentagon had <coughs> no information on what had happened. <coughs> that lying to grieving parents in order to protect criminal behavior is an example, just one example, of the kind of <coughs> cruelty of government behavior that makes whistleblowing necessary. WikiLeaks exposed uh, reporting on the corruption, very good American diplomatic reporting, on the corruption in Tunisia, which helped spark the Arab Revolution. WikiLeaks revealed to the people of Yemen that their president had deliberately agreed with the Americans to put out that American bombing and drone raids were in fact terrorist suicide bombs. I could go on and on with so much information that WikiLeaks has given that has enriched the world, made the world a better place. If we could always trust governments, we would not need WikiLeaks. But we can't, and we do.